guys, Jeff Kiesel, Kiesel Guitars, Carving Guitars, here to do the Q&A. So thank you guys for watching the couple of videos we've posted so far. Um, that was all done in one session. So now kind of picking it back up, um, getting the original questions that weren't quite all the way answered from the first session, plus a lot of you guys have asked more questions. So anyhow, again, just to reiterate, I have not pre-read these questions. So I want to come across, you know, like as if you're asking me the questions, so you can see my reaction because I'm reading it for the first time. So I'm going to go ahead and start and I'm going to try to get through these quick so it's not so long-winded. i got to not be a schoolgirl and, and be so gabby. <clears throat> so let's see here. Are uh, baking bodies and necks anything that have been considered for durability against elements? Um, to answer that, I've kind of already answered that in the first uh, Q&A. I was talking about baked fingerboards. Um, we don't bake the woods because what happens is you over dry the wood really fast um, and you end up you know drying it out quickly rapidly and you actually stress the wood out and it's more prone to cracking and having problems um, we kiln dry all of our wood slowly kiln dry all of it um, it's totally different than a baking process so um, it adds stability by kiln drying it actually so baking does not add stability um, two-part question also since custom um, is a popular word in this whole scheme. Would there ever be an option for extended scale seven or eight string options for other guitars like an AE-185? Um, probably not. Uh, we don't sell that many AE-185s anymore. Um, at one point it was actually our number one selling guitar. Um, we sold so many of them we actually have a statue out front of our building of an AE-185. Um, but it's not one of our popular models. Um, so again, you know, a lot of time goes into developing these, so um, it's not just quick and easy, hey, we're going to make a 27 and it's done. There's a lot of re-engineering. Um, so I, I don't see that happening, but will there be more um, models that offered in a 7-string and 8-string? Maybe. They're very popular, so who knows. Uh, let's see. When can we get more Kiesel logo items such as picks, hats, shirts? Uh, when will the case have the Kiesel logo? And can you make calendars featuring Kiesel Edition builds? Those are all great. Um, I'm actually working on the merch, the, the swag, um, for the Kiesel and Carvin guitars um, logos and product lines. So we'll have shirts, hats, you know, maybe keychains, coasters, some cool stuff like that. Um, calendar's a great idea. Uh, we've talked about doing that. Um, and then, uh, let's see, the case have the Kiesel logo. Um, that's a good point. Um, I don't know. Uh, currently, the Vader um, does have the Kiesel uh, Custom Guitars logo on it when you buy a Vader for the soft case. Um, so I see those progressing into that at some point. Uh, any chance of getting neck joint options like bolt on a California carved top? Um, no, and that's something I covered in one of the other videos. Um, you know, construction is, is a big part of the design, and so giving an option like that makes it a whole different model. It doesn't, you can't really have optional, oh, bolt on versus neck through, because everything about the guitar changes um, as far as how it's constructed. And we try to keep our options where it doesn't really change construction, if that makes sense. Uh, could Carvin make a guitar that is, that is simply a neck with pickups and a bridge at the bottom? Active pickups maybe to make up for the incredible tone loss. Um, wow. Um, no. I mean, we could, but I don't really understand what the purpose is aside from having something that's very small and compact. Um, you're kind of taking the whole element of a guitar away and kind of more like some kind of a string toy, really. Um, I don't think there's a market for that. Um, could we make it? Sure, we could really make anything. Um, you'd probably want to have active pickups, I would agree with that, so you could get some of the tone shaping back. Um, but no, I, I don't see us making anything like that. Uh, any plans on making an option for the carve top series with a neck through joint or at least a carve heel joint? Um, no, there's no plans on changing the construction of the carve top. Um, I have modified some of the neck heels for some customers on some custom builds, so I can do that to where the neck heel is a smoother transition. Um, I've done that for some artists that have asked for that and some customers. So yes, I can do that. Um, obviously, that, then again, I have to do all the work. 
and uh, it's not a problem, I love doing it. So um, you can ask your sales guy about that. Um, so yes. Uh, are there any plans for a standard 24 fret bolt uh, neck guitar? Uh, one of the standard options and standard neck profile. Um, yeah, and I actually answered this in one of the other videos. We are planning on doing a, our own version of a 24 uh, fret bolt-on neck guitar, so you won't have to rely on the two signature models, the Greg Howe and the Jason Becker. By the way, I don't know if you can see this in the video. Um, one of the other questions on the video series a couple weeks ago was, are we going to make the Becker left-handed? Well, here it is right behind me, the Jason Becker left-handed. Okay, so there's that sheet. We've got about, looks like about 10 more sheets, so. Um, do you have um, any plans to add the 25 inch scale length option to the DC series? Um, no, we don't have a plan of doing that. Um, currently we offer the Lee McKinney, uh, the LPM6 uh, and LPM7 um, in the 25 and a half inch scale. Um, and of course all of our seven strings are, are uh, 25 and a half anyway, the DC uh, 700s. But for a six string, we do have the Lee McKinney. Um, Floyd Rose with Piezo will be available for any guitar, yes. Um, currently you can get a Piezo on any of the guitars we offer active electronics on. So like the TL70, we don't offer active electronics on that model, so you would not be able to get a Piezo on that. The reason is, it's not the top control layout, it's the back. We haven't programmed in routing out for a battery box. So if we don't have the program for a battery box, then we're not going to add it. Um, like the SCBs, 6 and 7s, um, DC 400s, the uh, DC 6, 7, and 800s, all of those we can do the, the piezo even on the Floyd. Same with the car top 6 and 7s, we can do the, the um, piezos on those. I'm sure I missed a couple other models in there. Um, will there ever be a 26.5 inch scale option for anything? You know, I don't get that request very often and with us already having a 27 inch scale, I don't, I don't think that's going to be an option. Uh, just wondering if the HHS Fender Strat compares to your pickups, vintage, um, Alnico's to yours, I own carbon amps and carbon guitars, uh, truly sold, in, fa in fact you are making me a new NS1 right now. Um, just wondering if the HSS Fender Strat compares to your pickups. Um, I mean, our pickups have their own sound for sure. Um, you know, then again, everything has a 10-day trial period, even pickups. So if you get them and you don't like them for any reason, you can fully return them. So as most of you guys know, I'm sure so much affects the sound of a pickup. I mean, each guitar, from guitar to guitar, it's going to sound different. You know, not, not every guitar sounds exactly the same, even though they're cut on a machine. You know, we're dealing with wood. So... Something like that's very subjective because does it have a tongue oil finish? Does it have a gloss finish? What type of body wood does it have? All that really affects tone. So um, again, try our pickups out and get them in your guitar and try them in your environment. Uh, will Purple Heart ever become a wood option? Purple Heart slash Maple Necks look incredible. Um, yeah, Brian, you know, we've been working on some Purple Heart. Um, in fact, uh, I did a build on a Vader a V6 that was supposed to be for myself and it came out too nice to be a couch guitar. Um, so I put it up for sale. Um, it was jaw dropping, especially in person. And so I'm building another Vader now um, that I don't mind leaning next to the couch. So if that makes sense, um, I was struggling with taking this thing home. Um, yeah, you know, will Purple Heart be a wood option? Yeah, I see at some point we will probably offer that. Uh, would baritone scales ever be an option on six strings outside of the Vader? Uh, let's get old Kyle there. Um, yeah, I, I could see us doing a baritone um, six at some point. It'd probably be a 27 since we've already, you know, nailed the 27 inch scale length. Um, any way of making a simpler order form on the website, for example, a base ST300 in deep green flame, matching headstock, and vibrato, everything else could be this the standard for me. Um, yeah, that's kind of hard because, you know, part of having the custom website is being able to fully customize the guitar. I totally hear what you're saying, um, and it can be kind of overwhelming with all of the things we do, right? So, you know, just take it step by step, and we're doing the best we can. You know, what I'm really pushing for and working on is um, a dynamic website. 
So in other words, when you select one type of option, you get a selection of other options. Um, that way it's not so overwhelming. So that's something we're going to be working on and hopefully we'll have in the next couple months. Hopefully that answered your question. Okay. Oh, good old John here. Let's see. Uh, I don't know what that means. So much my finger hurt. You know what that means? Huh? No. Oh. Maybe they're backwards. Maybe they're backwards. All right. Oh man. Oh, you know what's that other page? I see an arrow. Oh, an arrow. This one. Yeah. All right. Sorry about that. A little technical difficulties here. All right. Let's see. Um, when will we see a 27 inch scale on all existing guitars, but specifically the DC 600 or SCB6, dying for a Carvin Baritone 6? Kind of just answered that one. Um, my guy here didn't do a very good job filtering them out because <laughs> I'm answering the same questions over and over again. Um, you know, we've, like I have said, we've given you guys a ton of choices and, you know, we're working on new things all the time, but, um, you know, we do have a, a lot going on. So we're, we're working as quickly as we possibly can. Um, I don't know exactly when we'll have one. Could we have one in a year? Maybe. I don't know. Um, you know, we also are planning on moving too uh, this year, so that's going to take up a lot of my time. Can you talk about what features the Vader 2 will have? Um, well, there's no Vader 2, so I, it's going to have the same features as the Vader 1 since there's not going to be a Vader 2, so it's a pretty easy one. Um, any plans to open another Carvin store? No, absolutely not. Um, in fact, when we shut the stores down in May, you know, I knew about the split, you know, we all knew we were splitting the company. So May of 2014, we shut all the stores down. Um, and what was crazy was the guitar sales went up. So here we have less stores, but we're selling more guitars. And that wasn't the case with everything else, but the guitar sales went up. So um, I don't really see a point in having another store. Um, you know, we're planning on having factory tours at our new... Um, facility and planning on doing a lot of clinics so there'll be a lot of reason to actually come down and check out our shop it'd be a really cool shop too uh, so no um, how much for a custom color such as california burst also how much for the kiesel treated fretboard um, california burst i believe we charge fifty dollars extra for i can't remember it's either fifty or a hundred um, and then for the kiesel treated fretboard it they start at two hundred dollars and go up from there i've done a couple that are as high as six hundred and when it's 600, it's not because it's a special color necessarily. It's because there's multiple colors or the way they fade in and out from each other. Basically, if it takes me a really long time, obviously I got to charge for my time. So um, they start at 200 and realistically go between two and 300, and then occasionally we get four, five, and 600 dollar um, color treated boards. Uh, and again, our sales guys will be able to answer all those questions for you. Uh, they're real good with that. Uh, what is your favorite job slash part of the build process to do it in the shop? Um, also scallop frets. Uh, scallop frets I answered before, I'm not planning on doing that. Uh, something that kind of went away um, in the 90s. I don't get too many requests. Um, favorite job. Um, favorite job here, honestly, is probably doing these kinds of videos. Like I get all excited to show you guys something new or talk about something. So I would say this is probably the best part of the job um, is giving you guys some news, talking to you guys, answering questions for you guys, and then seeing the reactions you guys have. So that's probably the best part of the job. Um, favorite part of like the build process. Um, I'm gonna go with the design. You know, when I'm designing something every day I'm getting to work earlier each day the next day because I'm so excited to get in here and finish it and I'm like pacing back and forth you know like like I was waiting for my kids you know in the delivery room and I'm so excited to come in and see this new creation that you know kind of come to life you know where I'm working on it maybe I'm waiting for somebody like in the paint department you know I don't spray so I have to wait for those guys and that's probably the most exciting thing. I also really love working on the Kiesel editions, um, you know, putting finishing touches on them, 
um, doing you know extra comfort modifications in some cases to these guitars and just you know putting all the fit and finish on them uh, let's see here uh, would melted wood tops ever be an option um, I don't know what that means so I'm gonna have to say no um, sorry Duncan I don't I don't know what melted wood tops are uh, what are the tone wood characteristics of zebra wood and limba, black and white? Um, well, first, uh, zebra wood has a very similar tone to rosewood. Um, it's similar in density as well. Um, limba, black limba, can be closer to walnut. Um, it can be pretty hard and heavy. And white limba can be more like mahogany. It's, um, it, it all depends on the piece, of course. A lot of it determines uh, the tone by the weight of it. Um, I prefer the white limba. Um, I like, you know, mahogany a lot. So when I do builds, I'll use white limba over black, typically for myself, because um, with the black limba, it's a little too dark sounding for me. I like the warmth of the mahogany and the warmth of the white limba. 